Shalom, this is your Ark. Y'all is magnified, coming back with another informative video. This video is titled, Importance of a Dismissal. So with that being said, let's get to it. Oh yeah, but before I move any further, I'd like to stay for the record. I'm not a lawyer, I do not practice law, and I do not pretend to. All my videos are for informational and educational purposes only. They're all facts and all truth, nothing more, nothing less. So with that being said, let's let's get to it. Okay, so now, again, I titled this video, The Importance of a Dismissal. A lot of guys been hitting me up on my YouTube underneath the comments, under my videos, and asking me if I'm telling them not to sue in federal court underneath 1983 for deprivation of rights under color of law, then what are they suing for? Now, it's many of things you guys can sue for. But first, you got to be in that right position to make all the right moves. You know, you don't want to be in a position trying to make moves that you don't have evidence to back up. They need tangible evidence, you know. They don't want to hear you going there and just complain about the law. It's a difference about complaining and claiming. You know, you can file a complaint which states no claim. And the court will respond back saying, failure to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. Why? Because you didn't state not one fact, not one evidence to back up any of your complaint. Which just makes it seem like you're going into court crying about the, the law. You know, you can have a million case laws. But if that case law can't point to your evidence to back up any factual evidence you have to support your claim, then you're going in there complaining. And they're going to say, uh, failure to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. Okay, but not only that, guys. Let's get back to the topic. So now, when we're dealing with uh, having your case dismissed, like some guys I, I'm working with now, they haven't have stepped foot into the court. But they know that, hey, now we can go into the court because the things that we've done prior to even trying to get into the court. You see, it's rules and etiquettes to get everything done. And I try to tell the guys, hey, okay, they don't want to bring you to court. Okay, that's time to play ball. Let's let's start bringing them into these courts and do what we need to do. You see? So that's the proper way of going about things. It's always proper ways of going about things. But another good thing that you can sue for once you get that case dismissed against you will be malicious prosecution. Right? But in order for you to show malicious prosecution, you must first show that there was malice being done. So now, as you got to see on the screen, I have the definition for the word malice. So let's read that. The intentional doing of a wrongful act without just cause or excuse. So now, the guys that's working with me, you know, you all know that they don't have just cause or any excuse to bring you all into these courts. You know, but for the people who are not working with me or who have not donated as of yet, you know, there is no just cause or excuse to be bringing you guys to these courts as well. Okay, but let's continue. It says, with an intent to inflict an injury or under circumstances that the law would imply an evil intent. So now we know that when they bring you to these courts, they only bring you to these courts for the intent to inflict the injury, such as the extortion of your money, you know, they extort money from you to pay off a, uh, a debt that just made up. And two, uh, if you don't pay the extortion fee, then they'll hold you in jail until you comply, which is more injuries. Those are two injuries done to you all, okay? And these are the case laws. You know, you can check them out, write them down, type them in Google or however you want to. You know, just coming out of the third edition of the Black Law Dictionary. So let's stroll up. It says, a conscious violation of the law. Or the prompting of the mind to commit it, which operates to the prejudice of another person. So now, even if it's a conscious or unconscious violation of the law, violation of the law is no excuse, man. Conscious or unconscious. Okay? Ignorance of the law is no excuse. They, you know, it's because they can say, well, we did this unconsciously. Nah, you still violated the law. There's no excuse. Okay? More case laws. But let's go to malicious now so we can get more understanding. Let's go to malicious so we can see what malicious is. So we're strolling up. 
malicious. They say characterized by or involving malice. See, so in order to have malicious, you need malice to occur, which is the intent to cause harm or injury when they bring you into these courts. But let's continue. It says uh, having or done with wicked or mischievous intentions or motives, which they have, you know. Their motives are very wicked to extort money from you, you know. And if you don't pay the extortion fee, then they'll throw us in jail, you know, like we, like I stated earlier. But let's continue. It says wrongful. And done intentional. Let's let's go up. Intentionally, without just cause or excuse. So now, in order to have malicious, you need a malice. So we went over malice. We went over malicious. Now let's go to malicious prosecution. Break this thing down. You know, get better understanding. Here we go. Malicious prosecution. Let's pick this up. Where it's highlighted at, right there. Malicious prosecution, guys. It says uh. One begun in malice without probable cause to believe the charges can be sustained. So now, when they bring you into these courts and they don't have probable uh, cause to sustain these charges that they're bringing against you and you go in there and they dismiss the case that they brought against you, then now you can sue for malicious prosecution. Why? Because they never had the right to bring you into these courts to extort money from you from the beginning. Okay. And not only that, they threaten you if you don't show that you will be held in contempt of court and they will put you in jail and they will be a warrant out for your arrest. So that's more injuries being done by simply not showing, you know. But let's continue. It says, instituted with intentions of injury, excuse me, instituted with intentions of injuring defendant and without probable cause and which terminates in favor of the persons prosecuted. So now, that's like in my favor, like in my situation. You know, I'd rather use myself as an example than I use anybody else because, you know, I can talk about my situation better because that's my situation. But even in my situation, when they prosecuted me into them courts only to dismiss the matter, then, you know, that's admittance of the wrongdoing because they never had the, the right to do that from the beginning. But let's continue. It says, for this injury, an action on the case lies called the action of malicious prosecution and that's the case law so now after they bring you into these courts and they dismiss the case against you then you can turn them back around and sue them for malicious prosecution because they never had the right to do the things they was doing to you from the beginning which can be proven okay so now with that being said let's go and uh Check out the four major bullet points that you need to prove when taking the agency to court for malicious prosecution. Okay, so let's pick this up at the top where it says malicious prosecution and abusive process. It says when the legal system is used wrongfully, there are two possible causes of actions that may arise in response, depending on the specific facts of the situation. Malicious prosecution and abusive process, these actions are related torts in which the plaintiff can receive a recovery for a misuse of the legal system. So now, this is how we seek remedy. You can seek remedy for the simple fact of the matter is, when they, once you get your documents, you know, that they say that, hey, we want to dismiss this case against you, that's more than enough proof that they never had the right to do what they wanted to do because if they did have the right to do what they wanted to do, they would have done it. You see, but if they dismiss the case they brought against you, then that's more proof that they never had grounds to bring you to the court from the beginning. So that's misuse of the legal system. But not only that, they tell you if you don't come to court, then you can be held in contempt and they'll put a warrant out for your arrest. So that's threat. They threaten you to come. Not only did they threaten you to come, they never had the authority to bring you there from the beginning. That's more remedy. Okay, but let's troll up. It says malicious prosecution. Malicious prosecution arises when an individual or entity uses the legal system to bring a court action against someone. Even though that individual or entity knows the case does not have an evidentiary basis. Generally speaking, the plaintiff in a malicious prosecution action must have already obtained a favorable result before filing a malicious prosecution suit. That will be like in my situation, guys. I received a favorable result. Why? Because they brought a claim against me or a case against me 
and property because they never had the right to bring it from the beginning only to turn around to dismiss it after they threatened me and stuff if I was not to come and everything else. That's misuse of the legal system, you know. But let's continue. It says, to prove malicious prosecution. Now, this is what we want. We want to know how we're going to prove it. It says, a plaintiff must prove the conduct of the individual or entity, including the commonwealth itself. So if it's a commonwealth, that means it's also a state. Okay, it says, including the commonwealth is, itself fulfilled the following elements by a preponderance of the evidence, e.g., it is more likely than not. The first thing we need to prove, guys, when dealing with malicious prosecution is the defendant's conduct was malicious and not simply an error. Now we can prove it's malicious because the first thing they try to do is cause injury, which is uh, force you to pay. And if you don't pay, they're going to throw you in jail. That's two malicious things that happen, you know, alone. But let's continue. It says, second. The defendant instituted or cooperated in the in the uh, in the institution of the charges. We can prove that because they have to sign off on it before they bring you to these courts. Okay. The third thing, the defendant pursued the case without probable cause. We can prove that as well because they have probable cause. They would have just went forward with it and and be, instead of dismissing it. But we're going to prove that in other ways as well. But let's continue. It says the fourth. The case was terminated in a manner not unfavorable to the plaintiff, which means that it was in the favor of the person who's bringing the who's bringing the uh, miscellaneous uh, prosecution against that defendant. So it must be in the, the the it must be in favor of the plaintiff who's bringing this malicious prosecution suit, which was in my favor. If we're using me as an example. Okay, so now we got the four bullet points out the way. Let's go to the documents that they sent me. And we're going to look at those documents to get better understanding of how these four bullet points will work in my situation and others who will seek to get the same remedy. So let's go there. Okay, so now, as you all know, this is the original uh, summons that they sent to me, you know, to appear in court or be arrested. So now we're going to go through these four bullet points to see if malicious prosecution can be proven just on this document alone or on these documents alone. Okay, so the first bullet point was uh, it must have been malicious and not simply an error. Right. We can prove that. Okay, because malicious is any injuries done. So now it says the top X clearly states that be in prison until the respondent complies with the court orders or be fined for the second. X failure to pay child support as ordered on that date. Now, that's malicious right there because they want to cause injury to me for not paying the debt. You know, so simply for that simple fact, it's malicious. And not only that, because the case was settled and closed prior to even coming into this court, they still wanted to pursue on a settled and closed case, which makes it even more malicious. Okay, so that's the first bullet point. Was proven. The second bullet point, defendant instituted or cooperated the charges. Okay, on this document, it has the, the signature of the clerk, but the original documents that they sent me bef uh, before they entered into the clerk of the court office has the, uh, the signature of the person from the agency who filed it into the court. Okay, I don't have that document with me right now, so I can't post that up. But this is what I do. I'm doing, doing what I have right now, what I have access to right now. And that's the date, you know. The third thing is the defendant pursued the case without probable cause. They never had probable cause because the case was settled and closed prior to even coming to court. And because they knew that, you know, they had uh, dismissed the case, you know, when it was time to appear at court, you see. Or should I say when I arrived at the court, okay. Now, the last thing was, the last bullet point is this. Case terminated in manner not unfavorable to the plaintiff. So it means that the uh, the case had to been terminated in my favor. So let's see if did that happen. Okay, so this is the top of the page, right? It says dismiss on motion of petitioner. So again, the same person that brought me to the court case dismissed it. So 
And then it says the respondent, which was me that day, was present. So now, that's the third bullet point. You see? I mean, that's the fourth bullet point. That's all of them proven just like that. So now, that's malicious prosecution. I, mean, I got more evidence than this, guys, but, you know, I can't show all of that. You know what I mean? But this is just more proof that you can show malicious prosecution at will, okay? So now, all the guys that's working with me, y'all know what time it is, you know. Y'all know what I mean when I say these things. Guys who's not working, you know, who haven't donated yet, continue to study, you know, play close attention to the videos. Get some information, man, you know. Uh, if you all need my help, hit me up in my email at yardsmagnified at gmail.com. Make that donation. We get the ball rolling, man. You know, uh, for everybody out here doing their thing, you know, putting in that work. Hey, keep putting in that work, man. You know, so with that being said, shalom.